So cells are the basic building blocks of all living organisms. Depending upon the number of cells present in organisms, it can be divided into unicellular or multicellular organisms. For unicellular organisms, they are made up of only one cell and this single cell is responsible to carry out all the functions in their body. So when we talk about different life processes which are carried in the body of the unicellular organism, for example, in case of amoeba, various life processes such as intake of food and respiratory gases, digestion, respiration and excretion are carried by the single cell which is present in the body of this organism. Another example of unicellular organism is paramecium. Paramecium is also a single cell protozoan which has several complex organelles present in the body and these organelles perform all the functions which are required for this organism to survive. It is interesting to note that paramecium are ciliated unicellular organisms. So the cilia which is present, cilia is present on the body and it helps in the locomotion as well as dragging the food to its oral cavity. So therefore paramecium is capturing its prey through the process of phagocytosis. So we have seen that paramecium being a single celled organism has performed various important functions with the help of this single cell. Now talking about the multicellular organisms, when we talk about multicellular organisms they are composed of more than one cell. So as you can see over here in the slide a lot of cells are present in these organisms and therefore they are called as multicellular organisms. Now here in multicellular organism the cluster of similar cells form the tissue. Tissues basically they are the group of cells which have the common origin also the common shape as well as the structure plus they also work together to perform a common function. So therefore in multicellular organisms various cells are present which are specialized to form different functions and which collectively support the organism. Examples of multicellular organisms include plants which are again multicellular eukaryotic organisms and plant tissue system generally consists of two main type of tissues. The first one is meristematic tissues and the second being the permanent tissues. So when we talk about plants, the main function of the plant tissues are anchoring the plant to the soil, absorbing water and minerals and transporting them upwards and storing the products of photosynthesis. So there are various tissues which are present in plants which perform different functions. For example, if we talk about the vascular tissues which are present in plant, they transport water and minerals. Along with the sugars to various plant parts. So when we talk about the main conducting system, xylem is the tissue which transports water and minerals from the roots to different parts of the plants, whereas the phloem plays an important role in transporting organic compounds from the site of photosynthesis to other parts of the plants. So xylem transport water and minerals whereas phloem transports organic compounds from the site of photosynthesis to other plant parts. Similarly in human beings as well we can see trillions and trillions of cells each with their own structure and function. There are over 200 different types of cells 
which are present in the human body and each type of cell is specialized to carry out a particular function either solely and many a times forming a particular tissue. Therefore, in human beings, cells differentiate early during development to become nerve cells, skin cells, muscle cells, blood cells and other type of cells. One can easily observe the differences in these under the microscope. So therefore, humans are complex organisms which are made up of different type of tissues which carry out specialized functions in the body. Coming to the first tissue present in the human body, which is the epithelial tissue. Now, the epithelial tissue is the protective animal tissue which forms the continuous sheath on both the external and internal surfaces of the body. So, the surfaces are formed both on the external and internal surface of the body and various body organs which is made up of the epithelium. Epithelial cells are the cells, therefore, which also serves as a barrier between the inside and outside of your body and it also protects us from various microorganisms. The next tissue is the muscular tissue. Muscular tissue is characterized by properties that allow movement. So, muscle cells form the muscular tissue which enables all the kind of bodily movements. Skeletal muscle tissues attaches to the bones and they facilitate the voluntary movements in our body. 40% of our body mass is made up of the skeletal muscles. The next tissue is the nervous tissue. The basic unit of communication in the nervous system is the nerve cell which is also called as the neurons. So neurons send signals between the brain and spinal cord and other body organs via the nerve impulses. Nerve cells or neurons, they have appendages which are called dendrites and axons that connect with other nerve cells to move, send signals to glands and register the sensory stimuli. So neurons therefore are the structural and functional unit of the nervous tissue which perceive stimuli, transmit and conduct the nerve impulses. Another type of Tissue present in human body is the connective tissue. Connective tissue provides support, binds together and protects tissues and organs of the body. Connective tissue proper is further divided into loose and dense connective tissues. Blood is an example of the connective tissue. So blood is the connective tissue that transports nutrients, oxygen, vitamins and hormones to the cells and also along with that removes the nitrogenous wastes, carbon dioxide and other harmful products out from our cells. Blood plays an important role from transporting oxygen throughout the body to fighting infections. Therefore, blood cells activity is vital to our life. Bones are also a type of mineralized connective tissue that forms the skeletal system. They are serving many functions in our body, such as the bones participate in storing minerals, providing internal support, protecting the vital organs, enabling the movement in the body and also providing the attachment site for the muscles and tendons. So all these functions are being served by the skeletal system in our body. In the next video, we will discuss about each of these tissues in more detail. Thank you. If you have liked the video, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends 
And if you have any doubt or query, please post in the comment section. Thank you.